Ayurveda is a part of our great Vedic heritage and it's one of the most ancient sciences of health and healing. Through the serial, it's our humble effort to carry the message of Ayurveda to your homes and hearts. I hope and pray that we will have your blessings for this great venture. In this series, we have not particularly gone into the technical aspects of Ayurveda as we believe that it is best left to the Vaidyas to understand. Even as we use an electric bulb without really thinking about the scientific principles that go into its working, but yet we appreciate its use. Similarly, we hope that this series has helped you understand the fact that Ayurveda can help you maintain a healthier, happier and more wholesome life and also enable you to pursue higher endeavors without continually worrying about your health status. If your serial could really promote uh, people from both traditions sitting together, trying to understand each other with an openness, you know, not being afraid of criticism, at the same time looking at somewhere down the line one Indian medical tradition which is health oriented and which really builds on all the, the good of all this and very scientifically and rationally looks at the, the problems with each of these systems. I think uh, that would be a great contribution. Ayurveda defines health in terms of a totalistic approach. Western science think that things which are objectively measurable only are the things of true nature or of existence. Whereas Ayurveda gives, other than Pratyaksha, we give Anumana, Upamana, etc. also as a valid uh, epistemological factors. Ayurved and science, I believe, are at loggerhead, absolute loggerhead. They have uh, different foundations. The reasoning involved in Ayurved and in science are, at, uh, uh, are in conflict. It's, it's, it's not a dialogue between science and Arved. It's not a simple issue and has deep uh, philosophical problems in it. One is Aristotelian theory of analytical approach. You know, they start from the element principles of under and four elements and that kind of thing. Reductionist theory. Whereas it's a holistic theory which we are following. So it has to meet, it has to further travel together. As an instance, uh, I'll give an example of, uh, you know, if you take a curd, the curd is supposed to have uh, Ushnagun, it's supposed to be hot Ushna. And uh, if you sort of scramble it, make it into a lassi or uh, scrambled curd, you add heat to it by scrambling it, and the lassi is supposed to have Sheetgun. 
butter milk is good and butter is also good but not the curd because once you combine the butter milk and butter it won't become the curd further no? so uh, that is a thing both are good but curd is not good so if you have um, have uh, some kind of burning sensation in your stomach you take substance which is cold which doesn't mean something which is cooled in fridge but something which has a quality tasir of being cold modern medicine strictly strict to protection pramana we go beyond protection we go on to yukti we go on to anumanam and ayurveda has categorically told four uh, pramanas you cannot do causal reasoning with these entities and all our conclusions are based on these pramanas science uh, usually deals with uh, substances and the way these substances are characterized by by certain qualities like uh, size shape number length mass duration and things like that our understanding is based on shrad darshana we follow the vaisheshika nyaya kind of philosophy kind of world view which culminates in the ayurvedic uh, science also ayurved completely deals with secondary qualities now this uh, distinction between primary and secondary is a western distinction it's a science distinction fire is being uh, identified by the presence of smoke one of the anumanam that we make qualities which can be grasped through two sense organs like touch and sight are primary qualities qualities which cannot be grasped through more than one sense organs are secondary qualities like color le- color smell etc it is a concept in ayurveda that prakriti is one there is only one prakriti ekatu prakriti which means that this entire material matrix is one indivisible whole earlier aristotle had drawn this distinction between qualities which are given through more than one sense organ and quality which is given sense organ which has been later in essence time called as primary and secondary quality by boyle and many of locke and galileo and people like that so there in aristotle also said that only those qualities are robust qualities authentic qualities which can be which are given through more than one sense organ whereas prashaspad makes four distinctions including the one astral makes but he regards all types of qualities as authentic there is a chapter in charaka samhita also called purusha vichayam in which we have clearly explained the relation between the individual and the macrocosm purushoyam loka samhita it is to the man is an epitome of the universe he can no way be separated from the world around him the knowledge of eastern origin or knowledge of the oriental communities are primitive to western people so entities except in narved have mental entities physical entities all of them mixed together whereas science is very strict on it they think that the knowledge that originated in the west only is refined sophisticated others are primitive that is a mindset that we cannot change their mindset should change when they see that things beyond their science can understand also exist the issues are deep and there's no quick solution so you can't say you know holism versus science or things like that the ayurvedic holistic view was nothing happens everything happens in gradual steps so even if science changes it has change in its own gradual steps no? and ayurved changes it has a change in its own gradual steps we can take uh, this to a certain extent only then they have to come certain extent that they are not prepared they still now they want to gauge things or measure things from their own parameters which is not well developed so far you will look forward to really 500 years of dialogue of ayurved with science not next 5 year 10 year 50 years there is no question of which is more important in the world or us because the balance in the external world is essential for the balance in our own internal world and what we do is also going to affect the external world so that is a unique concept in ayurveda as far as there is a material monism we can say jnanam shena nahi jnanam kritsne jneye pravartade bubhutseda bhishaktasmat tatvam tantranushilana 
there is not sufficient understanding in policy circles about the relevance of Ayurveda, its epistemology or its theoretical foundations are not sufficiently understood. It is sought to be compared in terms of its theory with Western sciences and that kind of a comparison is not very appropriate. Science is truth. And ancient science, they were also doing science only. It's in between came a dark age to India. And we thought, oh, the science is something prescription from best. It's not at all. When the British came, or you know, right from the Portuguese, the Spanish and all came, but the greatest disturbance was created by the British. It seems that, uh, according to records, it seems that every village had a school. And the school was a complete school, a holistic life perception was given in the schools. We had a profound understanding on science of steadily growing and building up. Suddenly it stopped. When these people came and they saw that India is a very powerful country and the power comes from their culture and the power comes from their Vedic heritage, they decided consciously to butcher it. They, want to make, they wanted to make clerks out of every one of us. The Western world science started when? In the 19th century and starting with the scratches of Indian knowledge. Like it is very, mathematics is the foundation of modern science, physics, from where it came. Once they got the power, they said that all these schools, which are having Sanskrit as a language, shut down. So all Sanskrit, all these gurukulas were shut down, shut down, shut down. Paramana Siddhanta, Anu Siddhanta. You see, you have say the, you know, the, you know, Tan Matra, then Matra, then come to the Anu. And the concept, you know, it is you now, modern than any other modern science can speak and zero for example the concept is zero zero at one level they in all the textbooks they say it came from from you know arab countries and some people say from greece but that like zero came from india that like when you when you do not even have respect of uh, contributions like this when we address an enlightened person what we call them puja I mean it is beyond description infathomable that is the knowledge of science. We have attributed so much of you know, value to zero, decimal system. And it is our contribution, 1 plus 1 according to the Indian mathematics, 1.99 ad infinitum. This is what modern mathematics has taken. For people to realize what they are losing is to first understand and to respect uh, the rich heritage. And for that, uh, what are the basic concepts and the fundamental differences in the two models? Concept of you know, Anu started with Rig Veda. You will find the, the evolution of this cosmic universe. See, now we know that the manifestation, the first came the, I mean, the, from nothingness to manifestation. Then the evolution, the, for example, the Big Bang theory, what it ultimately lead to? It came from nothing, then manifested into the waves and sounds and then the solid thing. The origin of the universe itself is comparable to the theory of the Panchamaputas because it's, it all began as a big bang, the Akasha, Shabda, Spota. And because of that big bang, there was tremendous movement of particles and antiparticles. And those particles and antiparticles created a friction which made them to burn. That is how the first stellar balls were created. So in a Vedic tradition, we have all learned that this is how creation began, Akasha, Vayu, Vayu, Ragni. <laughs> विस्तारयतिलेशोक्तम् संक्षिपत्यति विस्तरम् संस्कर्ता कुरुते तंद्रम् पुराणम् च पुनर्नवम् Puranam Punarvam Kriyatam. That is, that the old text is revised to make it to up to date, to include the new experiences. In the same way, uh, uh, Charaka, Susurda, and other texts also used to be uh, revised. Uh, one, uh, see, not every day or every month, in, uh, uh, in the course of one or two centuries. I have been suggesting for last uh, so many years that Ayurveda can be translated, but Many, many technical terms of Ayurveda need not be translated. 
they may be merged as such. There is no translation for bab, pip, kaf, dos, arm, ojas. Yeah, har ek cheez ko, aap apni bhasha mein dekho kabhi, ki pani ye jo shabd hai, uski jagah jal ya ashuru, dono mein, tino mein hone wali jo cheez hai, wo ek hi hai. Par ashuru ko aap aakhon ka pani kehte hai. Isse kya ho? These are the technical terms of Ayurved, and if modern medicine or modern language wants to adopt, they should adopt as such, and they should try to know the meaning of this. So there is no need of translating them. There is a need of describing them. Acetylcholine, catecholamine, or histamine. ऐसे तीन उसके नाम दिए गए थे वो नामकरण विधि किया था के एन उडुपा साहब ने जो स्वर्ग निवासी हैं अच्छे मेरे परिचित अच्छे गुरुओं में से मार्गदर्शकों में से एक परंतु मैं जिनसे असहमत रहा हमेशा वो इन्हीं बातों के ऊपर क्या आप इस तरह से यदि आयुर्वेद के शब्दों को प्रतिशब्द देना चाहते हो तो या तो आपको पाणिनि के पहले जन्म लेना चाहिए था या तो फिर आपको इसके बाद ये प्रयास छोड़ देना चाहिए दस डिफरेंस बिटवीन ट्रांसलेशन एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन so when we it's well known also that when you convert i mean translate things from one language to other it's very difficult to capture that originality of the language in which the thing was actually written so we need interpretation interpretation wouldn't be a literal translation so that is true for ayurveda also like vata cannot be translated as acetylcholine but when we interpret vata acetylcholine may also appear to remind you of what ayurveda means as vata vata has some more vast, vast function. Understood? Just like, th uh, how can I explain? Just like thinking fire as bile. You know that fire which you see as bile. Fire is something very different from water. But the, that fire guna is inside the bile. To state a more clear example, in Ayurveda there is a term that health is sukha and disease is dukha. So normally when we say sukha and dukha, you would translate it as happiness and sorrow. But if you were to carefully look at the Sanskrit words, it has got a much deeper and physiological interpretation. The word sukha, su means good and ka means actually space. Space means the passages inside the body. There are one-to-one और दोनों समान ही है ऐसे नहीं होता। You take the original apple, you make a wax apple, you make a painting of the apple. The original apple has got the smell, taste, touch, everything is there. The wax apple looks almost as good as the original apple, but when you go near and touch it, you will find that it is only wax. It does not have all. Even the smell, you may be able to do it, but it doesn't become the original apple. Then the third level is you will have only a painting of the apple. It becomes two-dimensional. It is diluted. आपको अनुवाद करके देने वाले पंडित बहुत मिलेंगे घाट घाट पे मिलेंगे बनारस पे मिलेंगे बम्बई चौपाटी पे भी मिलेंगे आयुर्वेद को सिखाने वाला वैद्य और धनवंतरी गुरु नहीं मिलेगा ये मेरी बात आप हमेशा ध्यान में रखें एवरी आयुर्वेदिक वर्ड इज लाइक अ कंप्रेस्ड डेटा इन ऑल संस्कृत इज सो मच इज कंप्रेस इन टू दिंगल वर्ड दैट स्काई इज द लिमिट फॉर अनकम्प्रेसिंग द मीनिंग फ्रॉम अ सिंगल वर्ड so that is why we say Sanskrit is a bhasha of munis because Sanskrit makes you to do manana because it is in silence that you basically experience truth or nature and Sanskrit is a language which forces you to do manana because it doesn't convey the meaning directly to you if you that is why it is called as the language of the munis so how much can you extract from it how much can you hold in a cup if it is like an ocean you can only take a little in a cup please revert to us with your valuable comments about our serial. Write to us at Ayurveda, PB number 7102, Trichy Road, Coimbatore 641045 or email us at ayurveda at vsnl.com. Brahma Pratva Yusho Vedam Prajapati Majikrihat O Ashvinam Tausa Jasraksham Sovatri Putra Dikam Muni Teyak Nivesa Dikam Sedu Pridhat Tandrani Te